Sweet, All right. sweet. Well, what's up? As soon as I see your streams up, I'm gonna exit here and get on the stream. Okay. Yeah, it should be should be up now. So. All right, man. Well, all right. So we got Genesis 16 today. Uh, going into the Hagar stuff that we accidentally slightly went into last time. So looking forward to that. Um, me, as usual, different background if you're not used to it. Uh, this is my home, my parents' house and everything. Uh, so if you missed that yesterday, that's why the background is different. Don't worry, the quality will be much nicer next week. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we got Evan and Dietrich with us tonight. And maybe Kirsten joining as well. I'm Yo. not entirely sure. Um, how are you guys doing tonight? Pretty good, pretty good. All right, I just got back. It's cool, a little tired, but I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Hey, well, I'm glad it's you're here. At least this week, it's been rough. I am glad you're here. That that's all that matters to me. So, <laughs> but yeah, so Genesis 16. Looking forward to it. It'll be probably a lot shorter than last week, I imagine. Not as much I feel like to go into, but I mean, there's some cool things. Uh, goes on with the Hagar right, story. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, a couple things to comment on here and there. But uh, it's also not a super long chapter. So, Evan, if you have to read it again, uh, hopefully it shouldn't be as bad again. Yeah. No, no, this is this is fine. I could read through this easily. Sweet. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, short introduction. Get into it with our short, limited time today. Uh, so I'll pray us in real quick. Um, Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your... Uh, tonight to be able to gather for this Bible study um, as we're going through your word. Uh, I pray that you would speak to us through it right now, that we would hear your voice and what it is that you're trying to teach us, uh, not just in this call, but anybody who's watching this now and later on as well. Um, I pray that you would give us uh, your spirit, that we could be your tools to be able to speak the things that you would have us be speaking Give us the wisdom to notice things. Give us the heart um, to be able to speak well. And uh, for us to be able to keep you in mind first and for you to be able to speak through us and use us as your vessels for your transforming power in, uh, in those around us. Um, I pray that we all might learn a thing or two and that we might be able to take some of this and apply it to our lives. Uh, I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, sweet. All right. So... You uh, you good to read it again? Yep, I can read. Let's all see. right, all right. Yeah. All right, Genesis chapter sixteen. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abram, "See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her." And Abram heeded the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife, after Abram had dealt ten years in the land of Canaan. So he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. So Abram said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid. Where have you come from, and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress, and submit yourself under her hand. And the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendants exceedingly, so that they shall not be counted for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man, and his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all of his brethren. Then she called the name of the Lord, who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, ha Have I also have seen 
him who sees me. Therefore, the well was called Beer Lahai Roy. Observe <laughs> it is between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abram a son, and Abram named his son whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. That is Genesis chapter 6. Sweet. Yeah. Fire. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, and, and I guess if you have any, like, quarrels with it, and like, oh, well, that's not the whole story. Like, where's the, the rest of Hagar and Ishmael's story when they run away again? That, that's a later chapter. We gotta we gotta go a little bit further before we get yeah. there. This is, this is just the initial uh, birth of Ishmael and the... Uh, initial reaction of uh, Sarai and Abram and everything like that. So the rest of the story, if you're if you're wondering why it's not here, it's because it's for a later chapter. But yeah, Evan, what what do you got? What what's what's the first thing that came to your so, mind? One thing that comes to my mind, and I'm bringing this back up from earlier, from another stream. Um, this is probably a servant that was given to Abram or Abraham when he was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And he almost lost Sarah to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's like, all right, well, you guys should leave, but I'm going to give you a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. including servants, male and female servants. Mm -hmm. So honestly, to me, this just seems like something that he did wrong coming back to bite him in the butt in a weird way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a weird way, absolutely. <laughs> in a weird way, like, I don't know, you know, like, if you don't do what God wants you to do, that would just cause a whole line of problems that tempt you into doing things. And that's how I see it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, some sins truly lead you into more and more sins, you know? Yeah. But that was my first, um, or initial thought. Okay, okay. Uh, you want to talk about that anymore? Or... Or just kind of um, like bring there it was up. Something else I wanted to talk about. It was just interesting because I remember bringing it up in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it kind of it's kind of connecting right here. Oh and yeah, absolutely, just, absolutely. You know, problem after problem, sin will lead to more sin. Uh, the thing about it that I find it awesome though is that, well, at least in my opinion, you know, a, ch a child is a gift from God. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, like God, like e even when you sin, God can bring good out of it. Like it's weird. Like I'm not saying like <laughs> sin is good, or you know, keep sinning so grace keeps abounding. That oh, kind of yeah. sounds like that in a weird way. But but like it's more like when we sin, and it's gonna become something bad of it. God takes it and actually makes it into something good. It's kind of like what um, what uh, Joseph said to his brothers in Egypt when they came during the famine. Yeah. And he's like, you know, you guys meant this for evil, but God meant for good. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah. That's one thing that, that always encourages me throughout my life. You know, no matter what I plan for evil or what anybody plans for evil around me, God's always going to mean it for good in the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. For those who love him. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, we had a we had a whole sermon on that uh, not too long ago at my school, and there was a mm. there was a song. Uh, I don't remember where it originated from, but it was some kind of cultural thing, I think. And uh, it was a whole song where the whole chorus was just singing that it was uh, what the enemy meant for evil, God meant for good, and you just sang that over and over again as the chorus, and it was really beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is beautiful. That that's it's that's something that I've been saying a lot recently in the past couple of years. I'm like, you know, somebody meant this for evil, but God meant this for good, no mm -hmm. matter what, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that's something that's always encouraging to see. So it's good to see, you know, like Hagar's having the child. Still a blessing. It's awesome to see that God actually cares about her feelings. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Like <laughs> that, it's the, that's what I love the most about this story is that like Sarah is like treating her like crap, mm -hmm. but God actually cares about her feelings. Yeah, like even though she's not a Hebrew, she's an Egyptian. 
like god knows what the egyptians are gonna do to his people mm. later on and like she's not yeah. a hebrew she's not even a free she's a slave like it just goes to show like again what we were saying a couple weeks ago is that from the very beginning god has always been for all people right like mm -hmm. it's not like it was just one people group or or anything like that from the very very beginning of the christian and jewish religion like god has been for all people and that's seen in like mm -hmm. like you know paul talks about the things that separate people he says jew or gentile male or female slave or free right and like those are like the mm -hmm. like if you think about it back then that, that would have been the worst you could get like a foreigner a woman slave and what like it's just the worst you oh, can get yeah. back then. that that is kind of crazy to think about she like literally that's like the bottom of the barrel back yeah then. like in society back like, then really that like... was that was as bad as you could get you literally couldn't get any worse almost yeah like and god ca crazy. still cared about her like from the very beginning Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, I never even thought about it like that. Yeah, and, and here's, like, the thing that makes it even crazier in my mind. I didn't... I, I had this pointed out to me in one of my classes in undergrad. And it's this idea that... It, it, this, is, this is so weird to me to think about, but I haven't been able to see it differently ever since. So... Uh, Hagar in the wilderness names mm -hmm. God, right? And we can go more into that in a bit. But the crazy yeah. thing is, is that she is the first person in the Bible to give God a name. Hmm. Like, it's not Moses. It's not Abraham. It's not, like, any, like, founding father. The first person to give God an actual name is Hagar. That's hmm. that's crazy. That is kind of crazy. That 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 actually is like the first. Inst I mean, I guess it is. I can't think of any other one before that. Yeah, like any other time, it's just God. Like it's L. Like the common name for God being L. That's that's any time yeah. that God is mentioned. Like this is the first time he's given a proper name by somebody, right? Like we get Yahweh and Jehovah and like all these other names for God later on through the narrative. But the first time mm -hmm. he's given like a real proper name is by Hagar. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It's it's mm -hmm. I've never been she able to see it no idea that since it was then. She probably had no idea that it was going to be written into a book that people were going to read for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, she's just... That's so awesome. She's just running away, right? Like, trying she's to... She's just a slave girl. She's just a slave girl trying to escape, probably in her early teens, most likely. Um, mm -hmm. ru like, running away for her life, and then just God comes to her, and she's like, this is great. I have to, I have to name you, right? Like, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. That is sick. Dang, that puts a smile on my face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, man. It's, Same way. It's it's just the, these moments in the Bible that I feel like a lot of people just, like, skim over, but they actually don't really look at it and be like, wow, like, that's beautiful in a way. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people who would just read this and be like, yeah, so what? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Like, a lot of people just skip over stuff like this. Like, oh yeah, Abraham's the cool guy. Let's get back to him. Like, who cares about this nobody running away? Like... But if you, like, really think about it, and, like, think about who the person is, and think about, like, what God's doing and all that, it's... Yeah, it's amazing it's, how much it, God cares. Cares yeah. for, like, even, like, the weak. Like, you know. Yeah, it's, it's showing God's character through and through, you know? Wow. That is incredible. It's... Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, 
the angel of the Lord appears to her. So do you think when the angel of the Lord comes, do you think it was like... I, can, yeah, do you know what I'm talking about? Like when they say like the angel of the Lord came to them. Mm -hmm. I always think of like Jesus coming. Oh yeah. Like yeah. it's it's God manifested. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's like because... in the Old Testament, whenever they say the angel of the Lord, there's a very good chance that it's referring to a pre-incarnate Jesus. Like, a very, very yeah. good chance. Because, like... Like, that's the thing, and, like, in all the list... In the list of all the angels... That are in the Bible, um... The angel of the Lord is the only one that's actually worshipped. Like, I mean, mm. there, are, there are other angels that have been worshipped. I think, like... Gabriel or Michael? Like, in Revelation, I'm not sure which one it is. And John, yeah. you know... It appears to him, and John bows down and like I ah, don't worship me <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. God I'm, I'm literally just an angel yeah <laughs> yeah, like, yeah exactly that's the thing is like they just would tell you not to worship them because they just know it's not right so well every time you see somebody bowing down and worshiping the angel of the Lord they don't ever like say anything back they just accept it so mm -hmm. that's kind of like how we know it it is God yeah 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 and and like is I, I'm forgetting because I've been reading a couple chapters ahead in my own study. Is this the chapter where they meet at the tent, the three men, and one of them prophesy, like one of them stays after and prophesies about Isaac, or is that later? Uh, that. No, we haven't read that yet. That's... Okay, so that is a later chapter. That's not until like eighteen, I think. Okay, yeah, because I was gonna say like that's yeah. um, that's another place where like that sp that spot. Whenever we get to that portion, it's gonna refer to the angel of the Lord. Um, yeah. And in that section, I've never come across a theologian who said that that's not Jesus. Um, yeah. Like so, it says like three men came to visit. Abram, right, and then it says two of them left, and the angel of the Lord stayed with Abram. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've every time I've heard any kind of interpretation of that section, it always says, "Yeah, the guy who stayed was definitely Jesus." Um, yeah, that's so, the best part about the Bible is you get these little glimpses of Jesus, like the entire way through, literally from the very beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. from the very, very beginning. It's cool stuff. So yeah, I would not doubt that this is also the angel of the Lord being being pre-incarnate Jesus. I really would not doubt that. Yeah. I think that's the coolest part. Jesus came out to meet her. Mm-hmm. In the wilderness. So sick. Yeah, and that, that's like that's one thing that we we forget so much is this idea that God and to an extent, Jesus as well, whenever we see him come in the New Testament, like, they are so for the foreigner, right? And we get this in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. too, or the, the oppressed in general, right? Like, we see, even in the Old Testament law, like, God says, you shall care for the foreigner because you too were yourselves a foreigner in the land of Egypt. Right, and the Old Testament law says that you must care for the orphan and the widow, um, and people like that. Right, on the, on the people on the margin, marginalized portions of society, and like we don't even just get that in the law; we get that in uh, Jesus, you know, coming and saying the poor, uh, like the least of these, is the greatest among you, and looking out for the and him visiting with widows and the poor and looking out for them but it's also like in god's own character because here he's reaching out to this woman on the marginalized portions of society um and he's putting her almost on the same level as abram right like he's mm. promising her very similar things as he's promised to abram right like go back to, or maybe this is the second time he meets with her. But either way, he meets with her and he says, Go back to Abram, for your child will also be a great nation. Like, mm -hmm. 
he's like that's what that's what was promised to Abram, right? Like, go to this land because your offspring will become great. Wait, this, <laughs> I I just thought of something I, that I did not write down or okay. have in my mind before this, but this is something that I definitely did want to talk about. I can't believe it just popped in my mind right now. So when we talk about Ishmael and, you know, like, oh, I hope, you know, great offspring. He'll mm -hmm. be a man against, like, a lot of people will be against him. He'll be against a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if this is true, but I I've always been taught and told my whole life that the Ishmael, and it makes sense, too, especially if you look at Islam mm -hmm. and, like, their story of, of you know, of Abraham and his child, which they, you know, Ishmael. Mm -hmm. um, it seems that like Ishmael is the or the um, the father of like Arabic, like ethnicity. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No. So I've is that true or is that like totally like that's just what I've always been taught. I never knew if it was actually true though. I never had any basis for that. Yeah, you know, honestly, I I, I wonder the same thing, right? Like you've you've brought that back up in my memory in a way that I. Uh... Do you know what I'm talking about? Have, I do know do what you're know talking that about. School, actually, I, I think that was, that something, was something that they really taught at our school. Um, for, definitely. But yeah, no, they. I remember they taught um, that. And, like, this could be wrong, like you said. I don't know. I, I haven't heard anything about it uh, outside of there, but it does make sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I could be corrected. It would make by... sense because in the Muslim tradition, it's Ishmael that is, you know, the child that's supposed to be that, that God promised, not mm -hmm. Isaac. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Isaac is actually from the maidservant. Yeah, no, that, that is Ishmael was the one that was uh, given up on the rock. So, like, that's why... Like, it, it makes total sense, and I could see, like, Ishmael probably is the father of, like, um, like, Arabic. Yeah. Ethnicity. I, I don't know what you would even call that. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is, yeah, because I, I do remember hearing about that. Um, I, I honestly would be curious to look more into that nowadays, now that I have all these resources and all these professors and stuff. I'd love to ask them and have conversations, yeah. like... Is this, like, I mean, what, if you what give, do you guys say about this? I mean, if you go further, too, I'm not sure where it says it, but... I'm pretty sure it talks about how Ishmael is, like... Super crazy with the bow and arrow. Is that a fact? Uh, I don't think it, it's wait, that's Jacob, right? I think... Oh, wait, is it Jacob? Or is it Ishmael? I could have swore... Maybe it is I mean, Ishmael. I mean, Jacob is... Jacob's probably good with it, too, but I swear Ishmael is also, like... That's, like, his... You might be right. It might be both. <laughs> Does anybody in the chat know? Yeah, I no, Chad, you guys supposed... got it. Go for it. <laughs> He's supposed to be, like, a pro with the bow and arrow, I swear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I don't know, because that was another thing that I remember learning about. Well, you know, well, if this, if I'm remembering correctly, well, you know how Ishmael is good with the bow and arrow. Well, that's like what the entire like Arabic center of the world used to like, like Syria and stuff. Mm. Like, you know, they they that was like their jam, like bow yeah. and arrow, like warfare. Like they were crazy with the bow and arrow. That's what yeah. they were known for. Hmm. So that's why I also kind of connect. It's like, oh, okay. So, no, uh, yeah, that is an interesting connection. I didn't, I didn't put that together either. Yeah, hmm. like Ishmael kind of just passed that down through the generations. Because I'm pretty yeah. sure, like, if, if I'm not mistaken, Syria, like the Syrians, that was like their whole, that was their bread and butter of warfare. Oh yeah. Hmm. Now you've got me thinking. That, oh, dude, this is stuff I'd love to look more into, honestly. I'm reading the. I think it was the last chapter, 15, mm -hmm. um, verse 5, when he brought Abram outside and said, like, look at, you know, how numerous your descendants will be. Mm -hmm. And I think what they taught us, at least if I remember right, in one of those classes, was like, that was God's covenant with Abraham. And then when he had Isaac, that was, like, transferred to him, too. Mm -hmm. Like, Isaac and Ishmael. Like, yeah, yeah. you kind of got the. You're yeah. going to have all of these descendants it wasn't just pinned on one that 
Yeah, no, that's true. I remember learning that. Like, it, like he will have many descendants, literally, just with any child that he has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no. That's... I do remember learning that in school. <laughs> huh. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't put that together, honestly. And this is why we do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly why we do this. I mean, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. So yeah, like, no, I, I say it and, makes sense. And that's another reason of why, I mean, I don't want to be like this, but like, yeah, I mean, you know, the problem in Israel and Palestine, I mean, or, I mean, they have a huge problem with, you know, hating each other, kind of. So yeah, 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 yeah. This like could a be long a reason, history. A big reason. Big reason. Yeah. It, it, yeah, no, honestly, just say it like that. It's a really long history of just battling with each other. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, it's kind of like word for word. Uh, yeah. His hand shall be against like every man, and every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. Like they're right beside mm -hmm. each other, just fighting oh, all the dude. time. Oh, dude, this you is literally it that prophecy. Way. Just well, that was a uh, that was like the entirety of the Old Testament too, because that whole region yeah. was essentially dominated by Abram's family and descendants, right? Like you have the Moab yeah. and Edom and the other lands surrounding there that I don't remember their names right now. Uh, and then the 12 tribes of Israel, and then it's like all these descendants from all these, like, you have the two lands that came from Lot's children that became huge portions of land. You have uh, Jacob and Esau's, just like Jacob's descendants become the 12 tribes, but then Esau's mm. uh, children, they become a huge portion of the land as well. I think they actually become Edom. Yeah. Um, like, all of the descendants at some point become a portion of the land. Um, which actually, come to think of it, uh, th this is, like, complete interpretation, this is not, like, fact by any means, but my professor, um, has this really, really out there theory that in, in a lot of ways makes sense, but there's no grounding for it, right? And, um, mm. it's the idea that the Midianites were somehow descendants of, uh, Abram or Ishmael or somebody like that. Um... And essentially they say that because, you know, we, we whenever Moses goes out there, there's already these Yahweh worshippers, right? And it's like, yeah, how, did they, yeah. how do they know about God? How have they been worshipping him this whole time, right? And the idea is, is that they're not Edom, right? We know that because they were called something else. They're not Moab, so it can't be Lot's descendants. It can't be Esau's descendants. It can't be anything like that. Um, but in that region where the Midianites settled, that's a portion of that's a that's a area of land that Abram had settled uh, in his very late years uh, after leaving the land. Right, he left the land very very late in his life, and he settled near that region for a short period of time. And the idea is that mm. uh, maybe Ishmael stayed behind, or so, so, something happened. Right, and those were Abram's descendants that lived there. And that's why the Midianites were so successful because they were Abram's offspring. And the reason they worshiped God was because Abram had taught them about the God that blessed him so greatly. Mm -hmm. So it's an out there theory. That makes sense. It's a, it's a really out there theory, but I think it's cool at the very least. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it kind of connects a lot of things together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, that that that's the thing is, like, whenever we call these theories, these could have been, like, very well known to them at that time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you, like, you know what I mean? Like, if it was written in their context, they could, like, they could probably just infer, like, oh, yeah, well, we already know that those people know Yahweh and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, like, that that's another thing, like, this was what the Hebrews did. Like, they called it Midrash in their society. And it was essentially, uh, for a lack of a better term, it was baseless interpretation. And it was, they would get together, a lot of the rabbi, and they would sit down and they'd look at the scripture and they'd say, they would just interpret it with whatever knowledge they had and whatever they could piece together, right? It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily based on anything. It wasn't necessarily... Uh, grounded in any kind of tradition or history or anything like that it was just putting connections together however they saw them yeah. working together and they'd 
they'd call it midrash, right? It's interpretation without necessarily great uh, basis. And that's that was a huge tradition yeah. that they did. Um, they found it, like, they, they said that God could appear in their midrash, right? They said, even though it's just, even though it's baseless, right, God can still meet us in us talking about his work, right? And that's why my teacher yeah. encouraged it, right? Like, we were at school. Oh, that's right? sick. Yeah, and, and, like, we were at school, right? So, like, whenever we think of stuff, we're, like, research and paper-oriented. So we would say, like, oh, well, there's no backing to that, so I can't say it for sure. Mm -hmm. And she'd say, well, do it, because she, uh, she was the Old Testament professor. Um, and other professors would do it as well, but she, she, she was the one that really advocated mm. for it. She said, no, that's what the Hebrews did back then. Go for it. Like, they loved that. They truly believed that in you just talking about his word, God will meet you in it. Whether you're right or not, he, like, his spirit is with you, helping you interpret things. That's so sick. Yeah, no, it, it's so cool. <laughs> that, I, like, that's awesome. I've never heard of that. It's it's if you look up Hebrew midrash, it's one of the most fascinating things I've I've looked into. Dude, honestly, I wish my Old Testament professor would have taught me that. <laughs> I mean, honestly, she probably did. I probably just can't remember. Ah, uh, I gotcha, I gotcha. But yeah, it's it's a cool it's a cool concept. Yeah, that's awesome. I never knew. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Let's see. So, so sweet. What 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 else? Uh, what else we got cooking up um, here? Um. Uh, hmm. I know we have uh the names of the specific. That, like the name given to God and the name that was given to the place and everything. I don't remember what they are off the top of my head translated into English. But... Yeah, I, I have it. It's uh, you are the God who sees. Are you talking about that one? Yeah, that's it. Elroy being uh, the God who sees. I remember that one. Um, and then there's the place that he named as well. I forget what that one was. Oh yeah, it's uh, Beer Lahai Roy. Okay. And, and what does that one mean in English again? Do you have that up with you, or...? I actually do, yes. Let me see. Well... <laughs> oh, here it is. Literally means, well of the one who lives and sees me. Okay, okay, okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Sweet. That is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, does... That's something I feel like I've seen a lot. Like anytime, like anybody's near like a well or something, I, I swear the, the the word beer is always associated. With. Yeah, that might be the word for water, maybe, or drawing or something okay. or well. Because I, I swear it's always like, oh, you tell me God spoke to me near this well. Oh yeah, I'm definitely naming this place with something that with beer in it. I swear that's every. That time. is a good point. Yeah. Huh. We're always near water, I guess. Let me... Yeah, maybe. Beersheba, that's another one. Yeah, there's a lot of them that start with beer. That's that's what I'm saying. Like, I swear it's always like... Huh. Wait, we're on. Yeah, no, that is a good when point. I beer in the Bible, it's talking about alcohol. I want to know, like, beer, like... Beer place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You know, speaking of, uh, my current plan for the summer is that I'll be coming home, but then on top of that, uh, my plan is that I'm going to be taking elementary Hebrew over the summer. So, oh, really? Yeah. So, if you guys want to get together and uh, look at some Hebrew with me... That would honestly, that'd be a huge help for me to help me memorize all the stuff that I need to memorize. But also, if you guys want to learn some cool Hebrew stuff, let me know. Dude, I'd, I'd maybe do that. That sounds. Sick. I, I love like languages and stuff. So. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be tough. I'd, I know. I'd... I know Hebrew is gonna be tough for me, yeah. but I gotta take it at some point. And honestly, the reason I'm taking it over the summer is because. Uh... Oh, hey, Mateen, how's it going, man? Good to see you. How's it been? 
But, uh, but yeah, um, what was I? Oh yeah, so, so two reasons. First of all, because I won't have to take it during an actual semester, um, which will be a huge help mm -hmm. for me. Because yeah. taking a language on top of all my other courses is going to be tough for me. I know that. But also, on mm. top of that, um, I, I want to take... So, Exegesis of Judges is being offered in the mm. fall. And you have to have oh. taken Elementary Hebrew to take your Exegesis Old Testament course. Um, oh, okay. And I really want to take Exegesis of Judges because the guy who's teaching it is the archaeology professor who is, oh, okay. like, like Joshua and Judges is, like, his specialty. He's, like, uh, one of the leading scholars on Ju Joshua and Judges in the world. Yeah, I remember you telling me. So, like, I, I want to take it with him because I know it's, like, his thing. Um, but, yeah. But So you have to have elementary Hebrew. Yeah, so I have to take elementary Hebrew before taking my exegesis of the Old Testament course, and I have to take elementary Greek before taking my exegesis of the uh, New Testament course. Oh, okay. Yeah. When my um, when my uh, grandfather was in seminary, he <laughs> or he told me like, he said he didn't have a problem with Hebrew, but he failed Greek. That's the one class he's ever failed in seminary. Was really? He, said he hated it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He, I don't know. He never really said anything about Hebrew, but anything. He was like, "Yep, Greek's hmm. the only class I failed." Like, oh, okay, dude, it's 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 going good, Mateen. How's it going for you? It's it's going great. I th I think all of us are doing well. I I, I know Dietrich and uh, Evan in the call are slightly freaking out about classes, so uh, may yeah, maybe some prayers good. for them. But I'm doing fairly good. I'm on spring break, so. <laughs> But uh, will not be fun. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, prayers for Evan and Dietrich. But I'm doing good at least. I hope you're doing good, man. Um, but yeah, no. So I've I've heard very similar things um from a lot of people that have already taken Greek and Hebrew. Um, well, I guess mm. I guess I should say, uh, everyone I've talked to who's taken both of them has said they've done really really well with one of them and really struggled in the other. Like, they either do really I, good in Hebrew and suck at Greek, or vice versa. Mm, I could see that. Well, the thing about it, I mean, especially if you're doing it at the same time, like, mm -hmm. that's hard. Because if you're yeah. learning how one language works, and then trying to learn how a completely different language works, like, bro, that's going to confuse you so bad. Yeah, and they're they're very Literally, different they're languages. completely different. Like, they're not even, yeah, they're not mean, even, even close like... to similar languages. They are so vastly different from each other yeah like that's like trying to learn like i don't even know <laughs> it's it would be like trying to learn different. like german and uh korean at the same time yeah it'd be something like that like two completely different have nothing to do with each other yeah like, even the form of the sentences are probably like completely different oh yeah like, no I it's like hebrews like Greek verb, is like subject object and then Greek's probably like object verb subject. Yeah. <laughs> like it's completely like completely forms. different. Like like Hebrew doesn't even really have I mean it kinda has letters, but they're more like syllabic writing than they are actual letters. Greek is more oh, Greek is yeah. very similar to like English. It's more modernized, yeah. it's more Hellenistic, it's very like it's kinda similar structure to English, but quite a bit different. Um it has um what else is i mean it's very similar to english in a lot of ways right but hebrew i mean it's, honestly it's right to left uh, it's syllabic not alphabetic i i think to my knowledge um it's it, it's just very very archaic honestly in a lot of ways <laughs> <laughs> dude i honestly like from an objective standpoint from an english speaking objective standpoint greek is probably easy like it should be. yeah like it should be easy mm -hmm. if i can guess right? yeah because hebrew just like, i don't know it seems like you'd really just have to start from nowhere in your mind yeah 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 so 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 cole made a comment sorry i missed it cole i was i was going back and reading i, I don't know how i missed it i think it was whenever i was refreshing the stream that's why i missed it but uh he said i thought wait let me read it again I thought one of Joseph's sons was the red-haired one. Do you, uh, 
Evan, do you maybe know what he's talking about there? I might be missing something. Hello? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we lost him. Oh, okay. At least it's not me. I've been really, like, freaking out no, about my... You. I've been, like, really freaking out about, like, if the internet's gonna crash tonight, so... <laughs> so, hopefully, it's still doing well. Yeah, hopefully it's not... I I apologize. Um, The internet I'm working with right now is, like, really not that great. So, we found out last night that the stream is really far behind what I'm actually transmitting. It's about, like, 30 seconds to a minute behind. So, if you put something in the chat... And if I don't read it right away, the reason is because the stream, what you're seeing is really, really far behind because of uh, the internet that I'm working with right now. So if you put in a comment and we aren't talking about it right away, that's why uh, I apologize. The internet's just not the greatest where I'm at right now. I hope that the quality is at least good for you guys. Like uh, the quality is not like, you know, 144p. Hopefully it's like decently like at least 1080p for you guys, I hope. Um, but yeah, I apologize for the quality being a little bit worse than normal with like my mic and the, the, like everything else, but hopefully it's not too bad for you guys. Hopefully you guys are able to get, you know, some good stuff out of it. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to figure out something a bit different when I come back for the summer because, uh, I don't know if this is gonna work too well trying to keep doing things <laughs> while I'm back for the summer on this internet. Um, but yeah, uh. Hopefully things are going well um, and all that good stuff. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, we'll wait a second longer. Maybe we'll get Evan back. I, th I think maybe you got a phone call yeah. or something. So. Yeah, no, I I'm back. I <laughs> I had to disappear for a second. I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah, well, I, th I, we just, I thought I lost my internet down. for a second. So I'm, I'm okay. Uh, you're good. You're good, man. <laughs> is, it, is it super, is it like super windy where you are right now? Oh, uh, it was earlier. Yeah. It it's like so windy out here right now, so that's why I disappeared for a second. I yeah, check on it, it's supposed to be a pretty bad storm tonight. Um, like a real bad storm tonight. Ooh. So we'll see how that goes and everything. Oh, well, that should be epic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully we don't lose power or internet or anything while we're trying to do Bible study. Oh, hopefully God will uh, stave off the storm for just a little bit longer and let the internet work for just a little bit longer so we can keep going. Because I know the internet is like one bad step away from completely crashing on me so hopefully god can let this keep going for just a little bit longer so we can uh keep talking and stuff <laughs> yeah i mean i think it's just gonna blow through real quick i don't think it's gonna last very long okay okay that's at least good. like the really like rough like the really hard rain it's supposed to go probably in like the next 30 minutes that's good that's good hopefully. oh wait what am i doing i don't want to do that <laughs> i clicked on the wrong thing my bad um yeah so what were we talking about again uh we were talking hebrew and greek or did we move on from that um i mean we were but i don't know what else to say about it other than the fact that hebrew seems hard <laughs> yeah and yeah maybe I, I might be down to do that that would be something fun definitely if i'm not busy class yeah no absolutely are you gonna be taking classes oh you are taking classes over the summer i forgot yeah, no, my, my thing is like Bro, I never get a break from school. The only time I get a break from school is, is like, during, like, a Christmas break or something. Yeah. I, I never get a break. I feel that. I feel it that, sucks. man. <laughs> hey, Nate, how's it going today? Sorry, sorry. I, I was just saying this before you joined. Sorry if uh, my comments are a little bit behind. The stream is about, like, 30 seconds behind uh, what I'm actually seeing and reading. Um, so, yeah, man, Nate, how's it going today? Good to see you. Good to see you stop by. Cole says, Beer Sheba and the Light... Horseman? Hmm. Wait, what? I don't know, I don't know. Beersheba and Wait. the Light Horseman. Do you, does that ring a bell for you? Wait, the Light Horseman? Yeah, the Light Horseman. Hmm. Hmm. Not ringing a bell for me. But yeah, man, how's it going, Nate? Good to see you stop by. Hope you're enjoying it. Hopefully the quality's not too bad. Um... But yeah, no, so, so another thing I've heard, and it, it kind of makes sense to me in some ways, is um, I've had it explained to me that Greek is very, very orderly and very, very 
um, like, rate-brained logic-type thinking, because it's, like, so, so detailed, like, oh. even more detailed than English, so you have to, like, really be able to interpret wording and stuff. Um, or not really uh -huh. interpret, but, like, be able to logically put together, uh, different ideas and stuff. Whereas Hebrew is mm -hmm. very, very kind of, like, left-brained, creative, interpretive, because I guess the Hebrew language, oh. there's not a lot of words, so what words they do have, um, is really kind of interpretive kind of work, which is really interesting to me. Like, would you say that they're, they're, they're more of a high context culture than a low context? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Gre Greek is like heavy, heavy, heavy context, heavy language. Like, so whenever we see, like, for instance, uh, oh, hey, Zev, how's it going, man? Good to see you stop by. G coming in at a good point. <laughs> um,. But yeah, so Greek is, like, heavily ordered. Like, so whenever we hear sermons, like, there's five words for love in their language, that's, like, a real thing. Yeah. Like, because there's so many different forms of love. Like, you have a fatherly love, you have, like, a friendly love, you have, like, like all these different forms of love, right? Yeah. Um, and in a similar way, like, like, it's just so contextual and so ordered, right, um, in the Greek. Whereas the Hebrew, there's a lot less words, and it's a lot more... Like, think of the Psalms, right? Like, there's, like, so much interpretation and so much, like, wordplay and stuff. It's more, like, poetic and flowy and interpretive of a language. So it's, like, the complete opposite. Like, that was how he, uh, my friend explained it to me after having taken both. He said, like, Hebrew is really left-brained, creative, interpretive thinking, and Greek is really right-brained, logic putting pieces together kind of thinking hmm. which i mean i guess i'll find out soon enough because i gotta take hebrew over the <laughs> summer and i gotta take greek like probably in the spring so so like in terms of like i mean you might not even know this yet because i know you haven't done any of it yet but like in terms of like love like the word love mm -hmm. there's multiple loves in greek and yeah philia familia you know um so like in Hebrew, then, is like how many words are there for love in Hebrew? Is it just one? I think it might just be one. I'm not entirely sure, but I think it might just be because one. honestly, that that would kind of make it in a way not exactly, but it that would kind of make it in a way like our language because we only have one. Yeah, word. yeah, that's true. That's true. And, 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 and the way that we say it, like, is you know you determine what that means based off the context. Mm -hmm. like saying, you know, I love you to, like, I don't know, my mother, versus I love you to, like, my wife, or, like, I love... <laughs> I love pancakes, which is, like, I love yeah, God, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, we, exactly, we, we, exactly. We think about, like, the context, so that's probably... I wonder if that's why my grandfather thought Hebrew is easier. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah, 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 I gotcha. Because in a way, that kind of makes it closer to our language. In mm -hmm. a way, in a way. Obviously, we have a lot of words, so... But, I, I, you know, we have, like, certain words where it's like... Now, that could mean a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And that's really yeah. going to be based off of... Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so so speaking of, chat, I want to hear from you. I, I, I haven't been interacting with you guys as much, uh, but now that there's quite a few of you here, it seems like. Uh, what Have you guys ever heard, yes or no, uh, the different words for love in the Greek language and how we translate? Because, like, uh, like, the idea, the sermons that talk about um, Greek having five words for love, whereas we in English translate every single one of those five words into the word love for English, right? Have you guys ever heard the sermons before about there being five words for love? Um, and if so, can you tell me what those five words would be, right? Because I, I, I know like two or three of them off the top of my head, but I want to I wanna know if you guys uh, can, can name all of them or uh, any more of them than I can. And it might take a second because the stream's a little bit behind, so I'll, I'll I'll wait a little bit on those responses. But while we're while we're talking, um, yeah. So so we have uh, going back to what we were originally talking about. We got Hagar, who is naming God uh, Elroy, 
uh, the God who sees, right? So El being the Hebrew common term for God, right? So, so if you don't know that already, the Hebrew word for God was El, spelled E-L, right? So whenever we say God, they say El, right? So then in this instance, um, she's saying Elroy, which is the God who sees, right? Um, and then we've got this other, it's, uh, Beer something something Roy, right? Uh, the place where God saw me is what it was. I think. Wait, what is it? Uh, the place that she named, Beer something Roy, wasn't oh, it? Yes, wasn't in that English, is, that's the place where God saw me? Or yes, something like that? it is, you, you are the God who sees, and it is Beer Lahai... Roy. Beer la high, Roy. Hmm. Okay. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Do we, do we want to talk more about those? Oh, wait, actually, real quick. Uh, it makes sense. It depends on the person. I've taken French and Spanish. Personally, I think French is way easier, but most people I've heard prefer Spanish. Okay. I mean, I, I'm, I know it might take a second to catch up so I can respond to it, but, uh, what, uh, what would you say are the differences between French and Spanish? Because I think of them as being fairly similar languages. How would you differentiate them? What would you say is different about the two? I'm, I'd be curious to see what you'd say about that. What's up? Yeah, Nate, dude, it's not, It's good to see you, Nate. I'm sorry if my comments are really far behind. I know I've apologized about this a lot of times, but I still feel bad. Uh, so yeah, Nate, it's good to see you, man. Hopefully, hopefully all's well with you and everything. But, uh, yeah, sorry, going back to what I was saying, um, what do we think? Well, I mean, this is the first time any anybody has ever named God in the Bible, and it's Elroy, the God who sees, right? What, what, what do we think of that? So I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna be honest. It's a good name. Yeah. That is sick. I want to start doing that. Dude, every time we do these streams, I always just tell myself that I just want to start going back to, like, old, older things, you know? Yeah, like their way like, of thinking. Like the, like, the one time we were like, dude, we should start calling each other saints again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, um, oh, wait, no, what was the one I said last week, dude? That's the one I actually want to start doing again. Ah, oh, I forget. Um, no. I know you said something, but I don't remember what it was right now. No, dude, if you ever remember, please. I mean, we could go back on the VOD afterwards and see. Oh, yeah, that's true, that's true. I will have to go here soon, but not mm -hmm. until, like, another, like, ten minutes. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know if you have too much more time. Is there anything else you really want to discuss before you've got to head out? Um... No, honestly, I think we talked about pretty much... All the stuff that I could think of. Or okay, find. okay, I gotcha. Zev, no, no I did not get to ask the question yet. It's it's been a really busy day for for Evan. Uh, he literally like said, "I'll take an hour out of my day for the Bible study, and then I got to go straight back to uh, what I was doing for school." So I'll, I'll ask him when he's a bit more free than he is right now. But I I will at some point. I mean, you could ask. I, I have like some more time. Oh, it's 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 an off screen. It's it's not related to this at all. It's a it's a long conversation. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'll I'll ask you when when you're more free. I know you're real busy today. I appreciate you even being able to come yeah. on at all tonight. Honestly, like that was a no, huge call. No, it's nah, it's all right. Yeah, man, I'm I having, I appreciate it a ton. Well, it's not even just school too. I haven't been feeling well. I don't I don't know why. Yeah, you were saying something about that. Is it just migraines and headaches, or is it a bit more than that It now? literally is just... It's like my sinuses. It's giving me a headache. Ah, uh, I got gotcha. you. The, the weather changing. Yeah, I'm a nerd. I have sinus <laughs> problems. Yeah, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. No, um, um, no, yeah, but yeah, every time we do these streams, man, I just want to go back to like the old ways. Like, dude, so like, I'm just going to start like naming God based off of epic things that happened to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> like, if I well, find, like, a $20 bill around, I'd be like, the god who provides, yes! Yeah. Well, you, you know what, I guess Honestly. I guess that's, like, in a, an important thing, maybe, to, to talk about, right, is uh, the names for gods, right? And, I, I don't know, do you ha would you yeah. have, like, a little bit of time? Uh, oh, yeah, I got time. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah, so, so, like, 
I mean, I, I'm not, like, entirely too knowledgeable on the subject, but I know a little bit about it. Um, the idea that, um, names for, like, personal names for God, or for any God back then, was a really important thing, right? So we'll talk probably a lot more about this when we get to Moses and the Burning Bush, because this is the first time that this is really a, a prevalent idea, because um, it's the first time... Whenever God meets Moses in the burning bush, it's the first time that God names himself with a proper name that isn't, say, God of Abram, God of Isaac, God of some person, right? Like, up until that point, God always names himself, uh, identifies himself with someone, right? Like, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of your people, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And that's because... It was seen back then that knowing a god's personal name was a really intimate thing, like, only for high priests to have the knowledge of, right? Like, it was, like, a proper thing, like, um, it was just how they saw it back then. Like, you don't refer to a god by their proper name. Nobody knows their proper name except for the people who are really the closest to said god. Um, mm -hmm. so... Going off of that, uh, a since nobody really knew the proper names, to my knowledge, that was why so many people would give names to God. Like, they would say, like, that, like, they would attribute their own name to him because there was no other way for them to refer to him, right? So that wasn't, like, mm -hmm. to yeah. my knowledge, that's not an uncommon thing back then for somebody yeah. to say like oh you've met me here i need a way to refer to you i will call you this um to my knowledge i don't believe that was an, an entirely too uncommon thing um oh uh, yeah i don't think so i mean isn't that like basically that's just what they did at all the time yeah yeah but that's, that's to say I, like knowing I, I the guys a... what was that oh uh, sorry go ahead no, I was just gonna repeat, like, yeah, like, knowing a god's personal name was just such an important, integral thing. And naming mm -hmm. a god wasn't uncommon either. Like, today, if if somebody came to your church today and said, you know, like, Oh, this god that has met me here today in worship, I've really truly felt something. I'm gonna name him the god who saw me. Like, we'd look at that person like, oh, they're crazy. What in the world? They're naming God? What? Like, mm -hmm. that, that doesn't make any sense. But, like, back then, that wasn't that wasn't seen as, like, Yeah, it crazy. was very un uncommon. Exactly. And, like, that's a... I remember having a discussion with, with Terry one day, because Terry was like... <laughs> he was like, so... Something I don't understand is... Like... I don't know, he just kept saying to me, like, what's God's name? Or, like, what's Jesus' name? Mm. And, like, I was like, well, his name is, like, Yeshua, or y Yeshua, or Yeha, or there's, like, another way to pronounce it, I forget how. Mm. And he's, like, and I'm like, and re really, that's just Joshua in English. But, and so he's like, I don't understand. I'm like, you worship this guy, in, you, you're not even calling him by his actual name? I'm like, well, I mean, God has a lot of names. He's like, what do you mean? Yeah, God has a lot He's of like, names. Yeah. He, because he, differenti he uh, differentiates... I can't say that word. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he, uh, he, uh, he splits up Christians who are like... He would always tell me, well, you know what, Evan? I'm happy you're not one of those crazy Christians who claim they worship Yahweh. I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> I am. I'm like, Yahweh is God. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And he's and he's just like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's a name for God. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm like, well, what about, like, Jehovah? Or, like, um, what other ones are there? El Shaddai, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the or Hebrews had a Lord, lot of names over. for him. It wasn't just God. Like, there were all That's these titles. Saying. There were all these names. Like, there's a there's a ton of them. Dude, people call God Jaw, like. Yeah, you know yeah, yeah. I mean? Like, there, I, I tried to. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, so like, even to like get away from all the biblical names too. Like, you got to think like, there's a, uh, I don't know what they. Well, I guess in 
Spanish in general, it's Jesus. I mean, in Japanese, it's Kamisama. Um, you know, in English, we have God. Jamaicans call him Ja. Like, I mean, I'm like, bro, God has got many names. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I think is probably the ultimate beautiful thing about Christianity is that it's not monocultural. And, and that's... That's a huge thing that like really convinced me when I was younger to keep being Christian, you know. Because when um, I look at other religions, I, I think they like a lot of them preach like a monocultural way of living. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Like I think in Islam, it's very like, well, no, you gotta dress like Arabic. You gotta mm -hmm. like speak Arabic. You gotta, like. You know what I mean? When you yeah. do the prayers and chants, and it's all got to be towards the mat. Like, it's all very, like, centered around the Arabic world. But... Oh, my god. Like, with gosh. the Bible and Wait. it's very... Wait, what? <laughs> uh, okay, so... So this uh, is really, this is really <laughs> ironic. Um, so as you were talking, I noticed, uh, Cole had just put in the chat. Uh, yes, I hear more about the Greek words for love, and I was like, that's really far behind. And then, just Wait, now, just now, Zeb what? pointed out, I think he's more behind than he thinks he is. And I'm realizing oh. now, I think it's really far behind. Bro, bro that was like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, because Ze Zeb Are just now saying? says, but I know three of them, I forget the words, but brotherly, the god you'd use for Jesus, then romance, yeah. Th I mean, those are the three I'm thinking of. Brotherly love, romantic love, and then the the love that God would show. Man, okay, I didn't want to interrupt, but like that was just all transpiring in the chat as you were talking, and I just wanted to address. Yeah, I'm apparently a lot further behind. So I I really 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 do apologize uh, that I'm not. I feel like so many people have come in and tried to talk, and they feel like I'm ignoring them, and I feel really bad. Um, oh, we're like 20 minutes behind, man. I'm gonna have to figure out what I'm gonna do over the summer, because I'm coming home. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this internet. Crazy. Bro, do you think it's because of the weather outside, or do you think it's because of the air actual? I mean, my internet here at home is really bad, so I would not I guess you're right. based on the weather. I guess I forgot about that. You're... Yeah, I have really internet. bad internet back home. At home is kind of <laughs> I forgot that your internet at school is pretty good. Yeah. Zeb says again, as far as French and Spanish, Spanish has a lot more the specificities, like male and female in conjunction, the the word changes drastically based on the other words around it, and French is more straightforward, like this word means this no matter what. Interesting. Okay, I gotcha. That's good to know. That's honestly interesting to know. I thought French also had male and female words. So I did not know that. Uh, Cole's gonna head out. I know you're not gonna hear this, Cole, but I appreciate it. I appreciate you stopping in, and hopefully you learned some stuff. Cole? Cole joined the, uh, the, the Discord call, actually, just a second ago. Really? I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, and then he left. He didn't say oh. anything. <laughs> okay. I tried to say something. I was like, Cole, we're so far behind, dude. Oh, uh, I feel bad. That's, that's insane, because, like, I mean, bro, we haven't, we were talking about that for, like, a while. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, well, I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, sorry, sorry, did you have more to say on... No, not, no, nah, no, nah, not really. Just the fact that Christianity is very diverse. That's yeah, and it's that way. That's literally the way it's meant to be. I mean, th like, I, I okay. That's what I was thinking while you were talking. Um, just think about uh, just think about uh, that song that's really, really popular within the last couple of years. Uh. Uh, Waymaker. Which song is that? Waymaker. Uh, I was trying to think of the name. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Those are all titles and names and attributes of God. Like, Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, Light in the Darkness. That is who you are. Like, those are yeah. all improper names that we're giving to God in the same way that Hagar did. Mm -hmm. I, I, you want to know the Honestly, crazier thing yeah. that I didn't even put together until just now? We were talking about... We, we were talking about the, uh... The ethics and usage of modern worship music in... Our, uh, church setting today and there's a lot of really interesting things that go into that there's a lot of like complications and stuff that you have to think about um which we don't have nearly enough time to go into but we were talking about way mirror uh way um mm -hmm. and the interesting thing about that was that it um 
it was a weird situation because it actually was not written by like a Western audience. It was written by um, someone I think in Africa. I think it was uh, Kenya or something. Oh really? Um, and then like years after the the person put it out, uh, some writer in America like attributed it to them, like not to themselves, but they took it and made like a a single of it. And a lot of people associated it with that American artist. But then later they had to go back and say, like, no, I actually found it from this woman somewhere in the middle, I think it was Kenya, is the place. And that's so interesting, because we're talking about Hagar, who was a woman from Egypt, who gave this name to God based on how she met him, in the same way that Waymaker, one of the most famous songs in churches today in contemporary worship, was written by, I believe, a woman in Africa as well, who was writing it based on the attributes of God and how God had met her. So it's even happening today! People are naming God after how uh, God's met them. Dude, I'm so gonna start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I love if it. If I could figure out what the other thing was from last week, bro, because that's the one I really wanted to start doing. Dude, I'll have to, I'll have to oh. go back and find it. I don't, I don't know what it was. I literally have no idea. Dietrich, do you remember it? I, I know we had the Saints talking about the Saints. Um, I do not. Dang. Oh, it, I mean, I think it's, we were talking about church tradition and stuff. Oh yeah, we were talking about church tradition last oh, week. Man. That's so crazy. It'll come back to me. It'll come back. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll watch it or something, or it will just come back to me naturally. According to the timestamps, it seems to be a 10 minute delay. Shoot. <sighs> that's, that's so bad. That's insane. That is so bad. I feel so bad, guys. I mean, hopefully you guys have gotten good stuff out of this, though. Hopefully. Even despite. <laughs> oh, hang on. I gotta do something real quick, actually. I apologize, teammate. I'm doing it mid-match. What happens when you end the stream? Does the last 10 minutes get cut off? Or does it go oh, for 10 minutes after you end it? Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Hopefully that's not the case. We'll just have to sit here silently for 10 minutes well, at the end of the stream. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope that's not the case. Probably be us just talking about whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it'll probably be okay. Fair. Yeah, so is there anything else we want to talk about before, uh, before heading out? Speaking of... I mean, I'm down to stay quite a bit longer, but Evan, if you've got to head out, I then, mean, uh... I, I think I'm, we kind of I'm covered most of the stuff that. for this specific thing. I'm down to talk about it. Ever. I'm trying to figure out what this weird church... Tra I know it's like some old church tradition that I want to bring back. I swear, I just can't remember what it is. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what we oh, talked about. Man. Also, um, how many? Because I know you would definitely know this. How many heresies are there? Like listed, like you know what I'm saying? That were That's decided a good by. Like who even decided what was heresy and what was not? Is that like the Council of Nicaea or somebody? That was, that that was that a lot else? of different councils. Yeah, the, a lot of the different councils just came over time. together. Yeah, like like the early church came together and they just said, uh, you know, I could I could try and look it up actually real quick, like a, look up like I've, say a list of I've wondered, ancient like, church heresies. How many heresies are there? I know a decent few of them. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's uh let's do a search actually. And another random question, just What's because up? I randomly popped into my mind. Is modulism uh Harris? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cause that's like a oh wait, that's what we were talking about. Uh I think it was last week or a week before. Like the oneness Pentecostals. They're mm. super into only yeah. focusing on Jesus. They have like modul I can't I can't say a lot of words tonight. Oh my god. List of early church heresies. Gnosticism, I know that one. That was the big one that Paul was uh Oh, that's like the about. first one. Yeah, that was the one that Paul was battling. Um, 
Gnosticism is a term applied to many late 1st century and 2nd century groups who called themselves Christian, but de deviated from apostolic Christianity. Gnostics began around 80 AD and flourished into the 2nd century. All the forms of Gnosticism were dominated by a concern for knowledge. Um, Gnostics paid lip service to the same authority as mainstream Christianity, Jesus, and the Apostles, but they claimed only they had secret, reliable knowledge which was conveyed by the Apostles from Jesus that other Christians lacked. They thought evil was a matter of ignorance and distortion. They thought salvation was not a matter of forgiveness, but rather a matter of overcoming defilement through knowledge and enlightenment. Gnostics believed that the spirit was good and the physical was evil. They sought to release the spirit from the evil body through knowledge. The elect contained a divine spark with them that allowed this release. Um, so they thought everything material was bad. Essentially, I believe yeah. they also believed that God didn't, or like Jesus wasn't actually human. He just appeared like almost like a hologram because um, God yeah. was perfect. He couldn't be a actual human, uh, stuff like that. Um, didn't they also think too that like God in some I don't like I don't honestly don't know how to describe it. They think like God was the bad guy, but Jesus is the good guy. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, God I think himself so. is like the bad guy, but like I don't know. It's super weird. Like, like God, like when you go to Genesis and you see the fact that there's a creator, they looked at that and said, "Yeah, that's the bad guy." Yeah, because he created the material stuff. Because he, cre yeah, he created everything material. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I don't know if this is all of them, but we have a couple more on this list. Docetism. Uh, the word docetism I comes from the Greek called dokim, uh, which means to seem. <laughs> Docetists claim that Jesus was not both man and God. He only seemed to be. One form held that incarnation only mm. seemed real and that Jesus had no physical human body at all. Another form held that Jesus only seemed human and that Jesus had a heavenly body of some type. Another form held that because God had no emotions, Jesus was not God. Uh, like Gnosticism, Docetists believe that physical matter was inherently evil. Um, and then the next one was Marcionism. Marcionism is the philosophy based on teaching of Marcion of Sinop. Uh, Marcion rejected the authority of the Old Testament. Uh, he had a profound reverence for the teaching of the mm. Apostle Paul. He held that the God of the Old Testament, whom he called Demiurge, was not the same God as the New Testament. And he also held a form of docetism uh, as well. But he was the guy who tried to expel the Old Testament uh, from the Bible. Dude, honestly, that's probably just a lot of Christian people today are still on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's it called? Do uh, docetism? Uh, that one was Marcionism, that last one. Oh, Marcionism. Dude, mm -hmm. next time I hear a Christian say that the Old Testament doesn't matter anymore, I'm just going to look at them and be like, yeah, you Marcion. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like, what? <laughs> what mm -hmm. did you just mm -hmm. say? Uh, what else is there? I, I, I know there's more. Monast uh, Montanism. I know that's one. Yeah, what, uh, wait, let me find... Why is this webpage Remember that holding? one we talked about last week? Which one? I remember what it was. Oh, I have to pay for that uh, website? Lane. Oh, the heresy of the fact that you can't be perfect. Remember? Mm, yeah, oh, I forget what that the was. Guys that you, uh, the guys at your campus getting on people. Yeah, I forget, I forget what that one's called. I forget what that one's called. Apparently, the Catholic Church has a lot of heresy. Because I just Googled wiki, and the wiki is list of heresies in the Catholic Church. They have a lot, apparently. Uh, let me see if there's any in here that are, like, pretty popular that the church expelled. Here's one, Arianism. That's a popular one that the early church expelled. Um, the doctrine is associated with Arius, who lived and taught in Alexandria, Egypt. Uh, Arius was first pronounced a heretic at the First Council of Nicaea. Um, uh, it was the denial of the true divinity of Jesus Christ taking on specific forms, but all agreed that Jesus Christ was created by the Father and that he had a beginning in time, and that the title Son of God was just one of courtesy. So he was like a lesser being, essentially. Oh, I see. So that's what that's what he was claiming, I see. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Arianism? Uh, Arianism. That's mm -hmm. a big one. Um...
Oh. Yeah, here here's oh, another dude, one. Be... What's up? Do you have a really funny video to watch? I watched this really funny video today. Okay. From, uh, the Babylon Bee. And oh. it has something to do with, like, the epic prank of the disciples. And then I watched some other dude on YouTube who I used to watch a lot, um, like, review it. And he, he called his video, How Atheists Think the Resurrection Happened. Bro, it's so funny. Huh. Because, like, have you heard some of, like, the atheist, like, arguments for, like, what really happened? Like, about how, oh, well, the disciples just stole his body. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because, like, the disciples are like, all right, here's the plan, guys. We steal his body. And then everybody just murders us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, like, they start going crazy. And John's like, uh, I don't understand the plan. He's like, yep. why would we want that? Yeah, He's yeah, like, yeah. Dude, what do you mean, man? We're going to take his body. We're going to roll away this 10, <laughs> this 10, like, ton weighing stone. We're going to convince the soldiers to let us get his body. We're going to steal it. And then we're going to have everybody super mad at us and kill all of us in mm -hmm. brutal ways. Yep. And they're all like, oh, this is fire. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't, I don't understand why this is the dumbest plan I've ever heard. Yep. And that was, uh, that was something we talked about uh, not too long ago in uh, a stream. Uh, well, actually, it was a little while ago. But uh, it's the idea that, like, the apostles didn't die for a conspiracy. Like, let's say, like, it was all yeah. fabricated and they took the body and, like, they were just keeping it going on their own. They didn't really believe he was the son of God, stuff like that. They wouldn't mm. have died. Like, that's just common knowledge. Like, people don't die yeah, no. for a fabricated that's conspiracy. Yeah, that that's what I mean. Like, it's... Like, it's dumb if you really think about yeah. it. Yeah. Because it's just, it's, it's like, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, it, it's also just, it, it really is. Like, they looked into it. it. It is a scientific fact that no human will ever give up their life for something they don't actually believe in. Yeah. Like, that is true. They will or... not give up their own life for something they really do not. So, like, to say that the disciples didn't actually believe that Christ was the son of God and that he actually rose from the dead is crazy because why would they ever give up their lives for it mm -hmm. <laughs> and be yeah. willing, like literally willing to do it. Or at least one of them would have folded. Yeah, exactly. Like bare minimum, at least one of them would have folded. And that's like the bare minimum too. Bare minimum. Like bare minimum. Like, very bare, and still it never happened. And still it never happened. Crazy. Like, I just, I don't know. Oh, here's like, the one you were looking for. That's I'm, insane I'm, to me. I've been scrolling through the list. There's actually a lot. Like, I, these are the... I Okay, I recognize some of these. These ones are becoming more common the more I look at these. Um, but this was one you were talking about, Donatism. Um, this this one they make a note it's often spoken of as a schism rather than a heresy but it's what you were talking about uh donatists were really? rigorists holding that the church must be a church of saints not sinners and that sacraments administered oh, okay. by sinners were invalid uh they also regarded martyrdom as the supreme christian value and regarded that those that actively sought martyrdom were saints Hmm. So they. I swear, there's another one. There might be another one. This is a long. Like, there's list, Donatism. Honestly. I remember there was another. There was another one we were talking about. I can't remember what it was called because it was like way. I think it was a little intense than this. If I can find Maybe a list. Of yeah, there's a lot church. on here. <laughs> there's... <laughs> Hmm, Pelagianism, I know that one. That's uh Oh, that's yeah. the one I think I'm talking about. Uh belief that original sin did not taint human nature and that mortal will is still capable of choosing good or evil without divine aid. Yeah, Pelagianism is the one I was thinking of. Okay, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. Because yeah, it's similar um, to it the says... other one, but a little bit different. Yeah, because it says that holds the original said did not taint human nature, and that humans by divine grace have free will to achieve human perfection. That's the one. I'm... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. we were talking about that. Mm -hmm.
Hmm. Dang, that's kind of crazy. There's so many heresies. Mm hmm. I guess there kind of has to be. I think. Yeah. Because so, everybody's going to come up with a lot of stuff. To ward off the, uh, you know, what are they called? Um, <laughs> the false prophets. But, like, how the many people do you think human they are, are actually, like, either preaching a heresy or believe in a heresy? Wait, what was that? You know what I mean? Like, like, how many people today do you actually think are preaching or believing in a heresy? I, like, I would say a... probably a good amount. I don't know, honestly. Like, maybe not a large amount. Not a large, but, like, there's definitely got to be, like, a sector of people. Yeah, no, I, I was thinking similar. Like, there's definitely sex out there, but... Mm -hmm. I don't know what percentage I would think, honestly. Everybody. I'm gonna go with, like, probably 20% of Christians. I'd say... I think it also depends on where you're at in the world, too. Like, if okay, you come from... True. If you come more from the East, where it's, like, only Catholics and Orthodox, where it's, like, really, really mm. structured and you have to believe these things, then I'd say maybe it's a lot less. But if you come from yeah. the West where you can really say and believe whatever you want with no consequence, I'd say it's probably a lot higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, that's true, because with freedom of religion and stuff, like, really, like, you can go anywhere, so... Yeah, you I can just say whatever you want, honestly.